I learned and have a deep understanding of money shame. It Aversion to money comes from money shame, and it's about peeling back those layers and meeting people where they're at because I'm here to empower business owners. If you want to make more sales without the pressure to post on social media, I made this podcast specifically for you. I'm Leslie Stevens, and this is the Not an Influencer and Impact Maker podcast, where we talk about other organic marketing strategies to bring more clients into your online business and the stories of the incredible entrepreneurs who are using these strategies in their businesses every day to create success. You do not have to be an influencer to be an impact maker and build a successful online business. You're going to love the conversation we're having today because not a lot of people talk about these things. Audrey, can you tell us a little bit about you and what you do? Hi, Leslie. Yes. Thank you so much for having me on here. I am so excited to spill some tea on finances. Like you, I love to talk about the things that we don't talk about, which is your finances and just going through the journey of empowering small business owners with their finances and financial literacy, because it is not something that's taught in our society to the level to set people up for success. And I think both of us are here to set people up for success because we know how important small businesses are to our, our community. Oh, absolutely. And I mean, financial success in knowledge is like the foundation of running a business because you need finances to to not only get it started, but keep it running. So how did you even get started in this industry? Uh, that's been a wild journey. Um, <laughs> so I was going through the accounting track in school. It was the accounting world is very black and white and dry. And so I sort of jumped ship and went, I graduated with a finance degree. So I have a love for reports because of that side. And afterwards I got, um, I was working, serving waiting tables and the CFO there was like, Hey, when you graduate, come talk to me. And so I got in and was working at entry level bookkeeping in that sense. And it just like kept snowballing bigger and bigger into different areas. And at the end I was, um, I moved back to where I currently am in Oregon. And after I got done with a really big project where I put together a big book build of multiple companies, mingling funds, just to get their taxes together, to file their books together, to file their taxes. I ended up, uh, the accountant pulled me and was like, Hey, what are you doing? What are you at? And so I ended up becoming the account manager at the accounting firm overseeing everything. And from there, when I left that job, I, the clients found me, they found very creative ways to find me, like including tracking my now husband down at work (laughs) to get my number to, so that I could still help them with their books. And I swore up and down because in the accounting world, you see the worst of the worst, Mm -hmm. unfortunately. And so I, I was well aware of how bad things could be because that's all I saw. And so I swore I'd never be an entrepreneur, but here I was stuck with the battling. Like, do I work my normal 50 hours and on top of this handle my clients or bite the bullet and run through the fear and start my business. And so that's where I'm at. Oh, that is such a fun story. That is an adventure for sure. But I love that your clients came to you. They sought you out because you were so good at what you did. And you proved that as as you did your job. And that makes people want to seek you out. And sometimes we get so caught up in, okay, let's let's find clients. Let's hope we attract clients. But we lose the focus of becoming like so good at what we do that it makes people want to come to us so i know that a lot of people came to you but when you stepped into that role of being an entrepreneur did you use any other strategies to connect with different clients The only other thing I did besides the word of mouth and the clients that were already with me is joining organizations that were in my niche. So I joined like there's 
uh, there's chamber of commerce everywhere and i recommend that every small business owner becomes a part of their local chamber of commerce as long as it aligns with them and just jump in and get that networking because the networking is what really makes it because when you have that connection then people are like oh i know somebody who seems like a good fit you guys kind of feel like the same people so here you go here share the wealth and i always encourage everyone to do that in every capacity like you see someone and you're like hey i know a friend that you might have or might you might get along with and just go through connecting. We're all about connecting. Yeah, we underestimate the power of networking. I actually read a statistic the other day and it was like for each person you meet, that gives you access to like 400 more people. Mm, that's cool. And yeah, it was awesome. It blew my mind. But so often as entrepreneurs, we kind of stay in our little bubble. And we're like, people will find us. People will find us. I'm putting stuff out there. And that's a very one-sided kind of conversation. But it's about having the, the reciprocity of it and have somebody on the other side talking to you, communicating with you. And it's not all about you. It's keeping in mind why you do what you do and communicating it with other people. You have to tell people what you do and it doesn't have to be in one way. There are so many different ways to spread your message, whether it's by actually doing a fantastic job with your work and letting it speak for itself or just going out there and having those conversations and being a part of like your small community. You don't have to be a part of the whole entire world and gain access to tens of thousands of people. Sometimes you just need to talk to one person and get that first client and then talk to another person and you can simplify it so, so much. So when you work with your clients, you develop this relationship with them that makes people want to refer them. Now, a lot of what you do is educating them on financial literacy. Can you give us a little bit of insight of what that looks like? Because I feel like so many people are very intimidated by that word. <laughs> yes. And it can be very intimidating because like we talked about at the beginning, it's not taught like financial literacy is not taught or amplified in our current education system, even in college level, we don't necessarily talk about it at all. And so, it doesn't leave people up for success. And so it's very important to, I lost my train of thought. I am so That's sorry. Totally fine. One more time. What was that question? I want to make sure I answer it. <laughs> what is financial literacy? An easy one. You gave me an easy one and I still messed it up. Sorry about that. No, you're good. Take your time. <laughs> financial literacy is, it's very important to, Look at your report and understand what they're saying to you. I always say that you don't, if number, if you have an aversion to numbers, which a lot of people do, it's still important for you to understand what they're saying. You don't have to be in the, the day to day. You can have nerdy people like me doing your books on the day to day. But when you get those reports, it's very important that you look at them and understand them. And when your bookkeeper is starting to say, hey, this is a problem, listen to them because nobody wants to be the person to go to the employer and be like, here's a problem. It's not a fun conversation. So, but when they do come to you, be like, okay, and start peeling back the layers and figuring out what the numbers are saying so that you can make it a decision based on what your vision of your business is going to be. So. I say financial literacy is all about the reports. Mm -hmm. And it's so much smarter to be aware. Sometimes we kind of want to avoid that part because we just don't want to face it. And like you said, it's hard for people to come to you and say, hey, there's a problem here. But the quicker you acknowledge that there is a problem, the quicker you can fix it. And the quicker you can break through that and address the problem. And when you have your own business, you need to be able to have that knowledge to make those moves so that you don't get 10, 20 steps down the line and it's much harder to recover from. So I think it's brilliant that you empower people like that. Now, when in any part of your journey, did you come up against any challenges that you weren't expecting as an entrepreneur? 
Yes, and it's mostly, I have a love for learning and knowledge. I would be a forever student if possible, so I didn't understand the aversion to <laughs> entrepreneurs not knowing these things. Like, I get them not wanting to take the time to learn the full, like, here's a debit and credit to where I am with doing their bookkeeping, but I was very surprised at the aversion of not wanting to know their reports. That actually mm -hmm. surprised me. <laughs> yeah. So how did you kind of like break through that? I know there are different challenges and different types of businesses like where you're like, oh, this isn't quite clicking with my client and it's not, it's the way I want to fill this gap, but it's not the way they want it to go. So how did you work with that? I learned and have a deep understanding of money shame. It Aversion to money comes from money shame, and it's about peeling back those layers and meeting people where they're at, because I'm here to empower business owners, and that means wherever you're at, let's get you, figure out where that is, figure out where you want to go, and I make the steps to get there, because this is an essential, like you said, this is an essential part of your business, it's the foundation, it's what's important, and so... It's all about getting them that literacy and that education and that empowerment with it's it's been a journey. Every person is unique. Every person mm -hmm. is has their own history of with what happened and why they're what they are where they are. So it, it varies greatly. Yeah. So if it if somebody is struggling with that money shame. What is like the first step you would suggest for them to do to start to break through it? Because I know it's a process. <laughs> it is, and it's hard. So taking one step is the best step, whatever that looks like for you. I definitely recommend looking at your stuff. Check your bank account and your any transaction transactional account you have. Check that daily. Start getting familiar with what it's saying and making sure that those transactions are aligned with where you're wanting to go. Do you have random transactions that you bought a subscription five years ago and it just keeps going on auto? Are you using it? No, <laughs> don't like go cancel it. Take that five minutes to go cancel it and just start, start looking at it. Start being aware. Yeah, that's such <laughs> awareness is such an <laughs> another essential step. I mean, you have to be aware of so many things in your business. So I could see how it can be incredibly overwhelming, especially if you're not a numbers person. And I think that's a great thing to also be aware of. If you're not a numbers person, then find somebody who is a numbers person that can support you. In your business, when you are working with clients, what has been like the most fulfilling thing for you? There is, I get so much joy when somebody gets it. I don't know how else to say it, but when they're like, okay, that's what that means. And then they're like, okay, now I can do this. And you just see their wheels start to turn. And then you see them being like, their, their world just opened up just a little more. And it's a beautiful thing to be a part of because I know how much work there was to get there. And so I just, when you see someone so proud of themselves or start to like get excited by it, ah, uh, there's nothing yeah. better. <laughs> there really isn't anything better than that moment, right? You're like, oh, all of the hard work has paid off. We've done it together. So would you say taking that leap into entrepreneurship was worth it? Yes. I know I'm hesitating with that one. It's, it's, it's a wild journey and it's a wild ride and it's a beautiful one that I wouldn't take back. It's, I just, I'm very careful with my words with that because it's not for the faint of hearts. It takes a lot of soul searching, a lot of healing, and a lot of getting past blocks that you might not have even known were there. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and it confronts you right in your face. And so if, if you're willing to put in the work, it is a beautiful, incredible thing. And I encourage that. Yeah, that's such a great way to put it because yes, it is absolutely worth it for so many people, but also at the same time, it it is hard. 
And I think that is like why I love to have these honest conversations with people because it looks so nice and pretty and like it's easy and all of these things are going to happen so quickly. And it's just not always like that. And that's okay. And that doesn't mean you're a failure and it doesn't mean it's not going to work eventually. And all of these things that I just, I so want people to realize like there's not one path to success and if you don't fit in one particular mold that's totally fine like and if it's hard good do the hard stuff that's how you grow that's how you make something that matters because it is hard and like just like you said before like when you work with a client and they get it like that is so amazing in that feeling that you are able to transport like transform part of somebody's life like that that's something that you don't get in a lot of jobs and when you create it for yourself it's even like even more satisfying so if you are a risk taker if you are willing to do the hard stuff i highly recommend entrepreneurship but never feel like it has to be one way it doesn't have to be one way and you don't have to go out alone. Absolutely. Because entrepreneurship the gets lonely, but reach out, get those communities, get those, the, your tribe and reach out. Yeah. We think so often we have to do everything alone. Like even the financial stuff, like when you first get started, you're like, oh my gosh, I've got to wear all of these hats and I've got to figure it out. And it's like, no you don't have to there are actually a ton of people that you can connect with pretty easily that would be happy to help you it's all about kind of being humble and being willing to ask and being willing to receive help when you that that like fierce independence that entrepreneurs have i feel like it slowly over time as they learn like you can go further so much faster when you go together, when you talk to people, even if it's just a client or if it's somebody who also has a business, like you can learn so much by just getting yourself out there. So thank you so much for hanging out with us today and talking about financial literacy when nobody else will talk about it. So where can people connect with you and learn more from you? Thank you so much, Leslie. It's been a pleasure being a part of this. I love it. Love spilling the tea on honest conversations. Um, so Instagram is Graceful Penny, and my website is thegracefulpenny.com, or you can email me, Audrey, at thegracefulpenny.com. Perfect. And I will have all of her links so you can just go ahead, click them, connect with her and learn so much from her. You will not be sorry. So thanks so much, Audrey. Thank you, Leslie. What if I told you there is a way to get more leads in your online business without having to post on social media? That's something you'd want to know more about, right? Well, you can learn exactly that in my free training where I will teach you how to leverage simple conversations to turn strangers into paying clients, as well as how to borrow other people's audiences to build your authority, credibility, and connect with new potential clients, as well as how to make sales simple and easy. Click the link in the description or go to Client